Hello everyone and welcome to my Mousy Makes podcast. I'm Helen and I live just outside Durham in the northeast of England and it's really lovely to have you here. Thanks for joining me today. I'm just going to chatter on about all sorts of things as usual. Um, I'm going to have uh, a bit of making, a bit of baking, a bit of painting as well. That's why I called today's uh, a mixed bag of bits, bits and bobs. <laughs> I wasn't sure what else to call it. No particular theme today. And um, thank you uh, to everybody who's continued or started making really lovely comments on on my podcasts. And uh, I, it's really lovely to have that kind of two way communication with you, with or with some of you. So and don't worry if you don't make comments. That's completely fine as well. Um, I, somewhat podcasts that I watch, I, I never leave comments on. Some I always do. <laughs> so it's only so many hours in the day. Um, anyway, last week, at least one or two of you um, commented that after last week's podcast, when I read out one of my poems, that, that I wasn't really a poet. And quite rightly, they corrected me on that. Um, because, yes, I should call myself a poet, shouldn't I? I call myself a knitter, um, even though I'm not the best knitter, I'm not an expert, you know, I don't do really complicated things, I don't think anyway, and it's not amazing quality of knitting or anything, but I still call myself a knitter, so why can't I call myself a poet? And there's the same that same problem with this word artist, which I've discussed before, I'm not going to have a, a, another long discussion about it now. It's like, why do we feel like there's some things we're just, oh, no, we're just not good enough for that. But, you know, if you write poems, then yes, you are a poet. If you do paintings or drawings or other kind of um, artwork, then of course you're an artist. <laughs> you're an artist in lots of other ways as well. You're an artist, actually, when you're creating knitted things and crocheted things and sewn things. So, yeah, I don't know. We don't do ourselves any favours sometimes, do we? let's be a little bit more encouraging with ourselves and so that's one of the things that you know I, I, I try and do through my podcasts is just to be encouraging you to actually you know just just do something if you fancy doing it have a go at it um, even if you're a little bit afraid of it remember you don't have to show anybody what you've done <laughs> you can just have a little go yourself and give yourself permission to um be okay with things not being um as you know lovely as you want them to be in the first place so it, it is definitely um necessary not to be hard on yourself especially when you're trying something new and you know i mean i've been sharing with you uh over quite a number of podcasts now that i was trying to learn how to do watercolor painting and so and the reason for me sharing what I do is is that, um, you know, I want to show you that you don't have to be a top artist <laughs> to produce something that's you know OK, quite acceptable. You, you don't have to be aiming for, um, you know, an exhibition in an art gallery or something. You can just create art and know that if you do share it with somebody it's probably going to impress them especially if they haven't had a go themselves or even if they have you know i mean i've some people have <clears throat> uh, commented on the things that i've painted uh, people who are actually who i consider to be a better artist than me and have been just really encouraging and and pointed out you know the good points and um yeah so it is, it's just always my message is just to give it a go. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so that was one thing from last week's podcast. I am a poet. OK, <laughs> and hopefully I'll share more of my poems with you in the future as well. Uh, yeah, and another thing I just forgot to mention last week when I was recommending uh, a book by Melissa Harrison called, uh, what was it called? I can't remember, it's by Oak, Ash and Thorn. I think it was called. Uh, and, and I forgot to mention that there is a, a second book um, in that same series 
called by Rowan and you. So it's another, it's, you know, it's a continuation really of the story that I told you about last week. Uh, and it, it's just, it, it just appeals to anybody who is, has any kind of an interest in connecting with nature. So it is written for children, but I mean, I've just finished reading this one by Rowan and you. And it, it's absolutely delightful, really lovely. There's no reason why you can't read this if you're an adult. Um, I just, I'm just quite keen to find some children I can read it to now. <laughs> That's the one thing I miss about not working in school with children. It was the thing that I loved more than anything was story time and just reading stories and, and especially stories with chapters so that we could really look forward to the next chapter each day, each day that came along. Yeah, anyway, so that's, uh, add that to last week's recommendation, book recommendation. Okay then, so yeah, so we're gonna be all sorts of bits and bobs today. So you can tell I'm a poet because I, I very often uh, call my podcasts uh, a title which has got uh, some alliteration in it. Um, you know, just, uh, I like to, th I like what the words sound like. So that's why, yeah, this week, a mixed bag of bits and bobs. It's just a nice bit of alliteration. Anyway, so a bit of making, first of all, then. And the only thing I've finished this week has been this little set of uh, hens, little little hens here. Um, and they were from a kit that I purchased from... Uh, a name that I just cannot remember so I'll put it on the screen now and uh, yeah it was lovely it was uh, just crocheted a very simple crochet shape that you then um, sew you sew in a particular way to make it I'm sure some of you might have made these little triangular hens before you can make bags in this way as well actually I've seen them made in that, that this way um, uh, look, anyway, lovely little kit and it came with some, uh, well it came with three 10 gram skeins of 100% um, wool, I'm not really sure what kind of wool, didn't say, um, and some uh, hand dyed felt by my favourite <laughs> felt making person, Hannah's Field, and yeah very clear instructions it's just it's a lovely simple project and i would say that it would be great for a beginner crocheter um which you know so it could even be made by a child although they'd need a little bit of help possibly with the felt parts cutting cutting them out and just sewing them and fitting them in into the uh, hen's body but otherwise yeah really lovely i think they'll just sit out amongst my easter decorations this year so that was a very enjoyable little project. Um, and the only other thing I'm gonna show you today of my making um, is this pink thing. You can see, I've just seen a bit of it here. I finally completed one section of the cabled short sleeve jumper that I've been making, which I think I started, oh, beginning of January. Yeah, so I've been making it for a while. Of course, I mean, I haven't made great progress on it, partly because I've been working on so many other projects as well, so it only gets an occasional look in. Um, and then, of course, I had the problem you might have seen in a previous podcast of noticing that I'd got the cables wrong in one section, so I'd had to take all of that out. And then I kind of fell out with it for a bit, even though I managed to fix it. Um, anyway, I finally got back to it, and I've now completed all of the back. So that is the back, it's going to have raglan sleeves, so it's tapered up, up to the top there. And so I am very pleased with that. I love the feel of the, the um, knitting of this yarn. So I'm using this uh, Silk S. It's 100% acrylic, but it does feel really nice. And I think that's going to drape nicely. I just think it's going to hang really nicely when I wear it. I hope so anyway. So I need to now uh, make a start on the front. <laughs> uh, and the front is almost identical to the back, except that you do some shaping for the front of the neckline there. So maybe I'll get a bit faster progress on that for a bit. 
Um, so yes, I say I'm loving the yarn. Um, and the, un the only thing that's a slight problem with it is that um, where, when you take the yarn from the centre, as I like to do for most projects that I do, where you, where you get a, you know, a ball of yarn like that, um, it very, very quickly goes so floppy that it, all, it, it starts falling apart. So I decided uh, that when I start on a new one, I've already wound it into a ball. Um, I think it was worth the time that I spent just to hand wind that into the ball, uh, ready to start, ready to start on the front. So that's really good. So maybe I'll have pro uh, faster progress now, now that I, I feel kind of good about having done half of it. Well, it's not quite half the whole thing, is it? Because I've got two sleeves to do, but the sleeves are just short. So hopefully it won't take me too long. So yeah, so that's, that those are my projects. I've got other projects on the go and I'll chat about them another time. Um, but we're gonna go into the kitchen now. I'm gonna do a bit of gonna do a bit of baking. And this is a cake that I don't make very often, but it's one that's really, really useful to have um, you know, in the background you know, waiting, have the recipe waiting, um, because it's a gluten free, dairy free recipe. And so the last time I made it was when we had a friend uh, coming who who needed um, who who is on a gluten free dairy free diet, and so it makes a really nice cake. So it's it's uh, called ginger and pear polenta cake, and it does taste different to a normal cake because of the polenta. It makes it it tastes kind of well not gritty exactly, but it's it's kind of got a grainy texture and it has ground almonds in it as well. Um, so it is definitely uh, different to a normal cake, but it still has a cakey texture, even though it's got no flour in it or anything. So, yeah, so you, you might like to have a go at it. Uh, but I'm going to show you how to make it now. So let's go off into the kitchen. nice cake there. Uh, so all I've got for you for the rest of this podcast is showing you me making um, a Mother's Day card. Well, I made a couple actually, um, the same. <laughs> and I decided to use my favourite YouTube watercolour painting channel, uh, Dewinton, the Dewinton Paper Co. YouTube channel, um, to to create this card using watercolour painting. And as I've already said today, I am new to watercolour painting. 
and you know I, I look at what I've produced and think mm, yeah I, I can see you know even comparing it to um, the watching the YouTube channel and what the artist doing uh, the tutorial produces I can compare them and see that no you know I do think hers is better but I'm trying not to give myself a hard time about it and and I'm showing you my you know process in doing it just to encourage you just have a go you know um uh, I think I am improving I think yeah I'll have to maybe another time show you some of my earlier attempts at watercolour painting and compare them because I think I have improved because I just keep practicing and it's the same with absolutely anything that you do the more you practice it the more you are likely you will improve I mean you might not make as fast progress as you would like but you will improve um, and hopefully I am, I am gradually improving my watercolour painting skills and whatever, you know, I know that um, the, the people who receive it will receive these cards, my mom and my mother-in-law, will really, really appreciate the fact that they're handmade cards, hand-painted, especially for them. So, you know, it's a lot, there's a lot more to it than just thinking, oh, you know, it's not all that good. <laughs> you know, you have to think about the, the bigger picture. Also, I just had a lovely time sitting there painting these flowers. So anyway, hopefully you'll enjoy watching me creating our Mother's Day cards.
okay then i think that's it for me this week and i thank you again for watching and staying with me if you've stayed all the way through to the end and so yeah i'll we'll see you again soon so until i see you then keep nice and busy take care of yourself i'll be back again next time okay bye